Hello, people. Welcome back. So today I'm doing another bookish video and this actually idea just came to me the other day because Cody has been reading these books by Brandon Sanderson lately and has been obsessed with them. And the other day when he came home from work after reading the third one? The third one, yeah. He was going wild after reading it um, at work and being so close to finishing it and telling me that I need to read them. He's been telling me throughout the whole series. So also, in case you don't know, this is Cody. This is my partner. And this is the first video that you're in. Yes. Yeah. First one. Does it this feel is, great? Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. So what I thought today is... Why well, don't... Well, well, we, we need to say the actual story here. Okay. I have been asking her to read these books for many months now. And she's always kind of like, you know, she's like, yeah, I'll eventually get to it. I'll eventually get to it. Um, but finally she said that she will definitely start reading them if we do this video. I am doing this video so she reads these books. That is why I am here, because these books are so good and I hate being on video. That shows how much the good these books are, so... True, accurate. Cody did mm -hmm. say he did not want to be in these videos and the I got him to be in it by telling him I would read these if he filmed this intro part with me. Yes. So, okay, so why don't we, why don't you tell me and exude some of this magical energy you were giving yet the other day when you came home and were close to finishing the third book. Sell me, give me the, the pitch for these books. Well, when I first gave you that pitch, I was in the like, in this like incredibly good part of the third book. Just a bunch of crazy stuff was happening. I was getting all hyped up. And I just had to tell Sage about it. So I don't know if I'm going to match that level of hype, but um, I mean, I'll try. So do you want me to just explain like what, what, what it's about? Do you want me to tell you like what's great about it? Let's... Your reactions, like what, what do you love about them? Like the other day you were talking about why this has become like one of your favorite series or books of all time. Uh... It's, it's the characters that are amazing. The, the world building is amazing. <clears throat> um, just like the, the pacing of the story, it, it, there's no like slow parts to anything. Even though these books are massive, they're, each one is like 1300 pages. I went through the first book in two weeks, which is, I've never done anything like that before and it just like flew by and um nothing feels like it's left out everything that's in it is like meaningful every little like plot point or character development is like built up upon or called back to um which seems like something that's hard to do considering there's so much content in these books. Well, there's stuff that's like set up in the first book that doesn't get paid out until the third book. Like, like things that I was, I was reading in like the third book. I was like, oh my God, that's, that was something that is like a, almost like a reference or a callback to the first book that was set up. And I just completely forgot about that. Like it's, everything is just so well thought out. Um, and it's an easy read. I hate books that are like, uh, well, hate's a strong word. I strongly dislike books that are- Not censoring yourself. <laughs> they're almost like, they're almost like, um, like, like they're trying too hard. They're trying too hard to like write something really good. And this author, Brandon Sanderson, how he writes is very, uh, I don't know, like, to He's me, doing... like, reader-friendly. Yeah. Like, it's very easy to understand what's going on, and it's almost like he's not trying. Do you think it's more like he's just kind of, like, storytelling, whereas, like, maybe some authors that you might not enjoy reading is where they are kind of trying to do, like, flowery, like, 
write for the sake of writing and writing beautiful sentences, and he's more so just, like, telling you a story. Yeah, 100%, yeah. But it's like, he he goes into, like, detail about, like, like ecology and philosophy and uh, uh, mental health trauma and all these different things. And as far as I can tell, like, it's all done really, really well. And it's really interesting to, like, listen to Brandon Sanderson talk in, like, interviews and stuff where he talks about how he writes characters. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he's very famous for being a uh, Mormon. He lives out in, I think, like, Utah. He writes, like, characters who are, like, atheists. And he says that even though he's writing a character that has a philosophy or a... Um, an experience that's different from his, he wants to make sure that he writes those characters properly and not as, um, like, a, a, like, what's the word? Stereotypes? Like a stereotype. Like, he wants to really want them to be fleshed out and be understood. He wants to understand them as he's writing them. Sure. So. Okay. And the other day when you came home from work, you said that you were reading the third book mm -hmm. during your lunch break. Mm -hmm. And what happened when you were reading the third book? When well, it was this, like, super, um, so, so each book is, it's almost, like, focuses on one of the, like, main characters. So there's Kaladin, uh, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing their names right, uh, Shalon, and then Dalinar. Those are the ones so far. Um, I haven't read the, the fourth book, so I don't know who, who's gonna be the focus of that. Um, but the, the third book I was reading was focused on Dalinar, and he's a very, like, he's an interesting character. I really like him, um, but he's not, he's not, you know, he's got some, like, past stuff that makes him not super great. Um, and just, ha there was a big, like, emotional, um, like, crescendo to his, like, character arc in the third book that, like, was very, just so incredibly well done, and like really hit me emotionally and I was tearing up a little bit because it's just like so it felt like even though it's like a book it felt really like raw and um and all that that uh I don't know it's just like really good it was just so so good and well done okay so I have agreed to try to read these books mm -hmm. and they are so thick they're huge this first book is what, 12, 1300 pages between there? I think it's about 1250. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to try and read this. But before we dive in and before we show the rest of the video where I'm actually going to probably just be reading the first book and taking you along with my reactions throughout that first book. And maybe in the future I'll do the other books. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give me a brief synopsis of what what's going on here? What's, do you, do you what's want happening? me to read the back? Oh, sure, read the back, and but, then I'll, I'll react but to this, it. But this is another thing I kind of like about these books, is that how he writes the synopsis on the back is very, like, vague. Okay. But kind of cool. I long for the days before the last desolation, before the heralds abandoned us and the knights radiant turned against us, when there was still magic in Roshar and honor in the hearts of men. In the end, not war, but victory proved the greatest test. Did our foes see the that the harder they fought, the fiercer our resistance? Fire and hammer forged a sword. Time and neglect rusted away. So we won the world, yet lost it. Now there are four whom we watch. The surgeon, forced to forsake healing and fight in the most brutal war of our time. The assassin, who weeps as he kills. The liar, who wears her scholar's mantle over a thief's heart and the prince, whose eyes open to the ancient past as his thirst for battle wanes. One of them may redeem us. Oh my god. One of, one of them may redeem us. One of them will destroy us. Spooky. So... So it really gives you nothing. It really gives you... So, okay, so basically, <laughs> um, this, this series takes place in a world called Rashar. It's well, a... Well, should we... Should I just go in without knowing anything? What do you I, think? 
Okay, so another thing about this book is, the, as I said, the world building is really interesting because it's so different. How everything is like, like again, the ecology and the cultures are so different from our world. So it's good to kind of at least have a little bit of an idea of what's going on because it's going to throw a lot of words at you that you'll have no idea what they're saying. So, okay. um, Roshar the, is, is the world. It's continent spanning. It's just one continent. Okay. Um, big storms called high storms move through the continent every like week or something like that. These are like, they're continent spanning storms that are like hurricanes, basically. They're okay. like huge. Um, and the further out, like, so they're coming from the east. So things that are really far out east, there's no like trees, there's no grass. They're all like plants that are very like, they're hardened. They have ways to like hide from these storms. They're very like, it's very weird, like sort of like ecology. Um, and there's a lot of animals that are mostly just like crabs or like bugs that mm. are like, yeah, like they have shells and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and then there's these things called um, shard blades and shard plates. These are basically like super weapons. So a shard blade is a big sword that can cut through anything. Like metal can't stop it, swords can't stop it, like rock can't stop it. It just cuts through anything. Um, and they are super valuable. So if like one person who has a shard blade can like kill a bunch of people basically. And then there's shard plate, which is armor that um, is incredibly like tough. And I think only, I'm trying to remember, I think only shard blade can destroy it. No, no, I, but like a bunch of like, you would need to like hammer at it for a really long time for it to break. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's pretty much, Man. There's, that's pretty much it. Hey, hey! Oh my god. Oh god. How do we get her down? Okay, I'll get her. No, I got her. Oh. 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 Okay, so that tells me basically some stuff about what it is, and the rest I'll just discover as I read this. Yeah, if there's anything that you, of course, you. Well, yeah, yeah I'll I don't just really know. Talk I'll try and ask. tell you without spoiling anything. Okay, so I'm going to read these books. You gave me a little synopsis. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we've actually said what the book series is yet. So yeah. thanks for sticking around this long, <laughs> considering we haven't said it yet. But this is the Stormlight, Stormlight Archives. Okay, so I'm going to read these books, and I'm going to check in with you all every so often while I go through this, and we'll see how long it takes me to get through this. Maybe since you did it in two weeks, maybe I'll try to do it in one week. If you read that in one week, I will be blown away. I will be that's shocked. That's not happening. There's <laughs> that's, no way that's happening. That's, that's like 200 pages a day. Yeah, that would be insane. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will check in next time with a initial reaction after I've read some of this book. Maybe that'll be later tonight. Okay. Any other things you want to say about the series before we move on? I, I really hope you like it. If you don't, you don't. But I have a strong feeling that you're going to like it. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. And you'll see. You will. Okay. Well, I will check in with you soon. So I've now re read to page 61 in this book, The Way of Kings. And I'm on chapter three at the very start, and I wanted to do just an initial reaction to the first 50-ish pages of the book, um, and then I'll check in uh, throughout the rest of the book, but probably um, less frequently than every 50 pages. So my initial reactions to this book are right off the bat, I was so worried that I had decided to start this book, and I was sitting here thinking, why did I agree to this? This book is so confusing. They're throwing a million names and terms out that you have no idea what's going on and it's not super explained. And then towards the end of the first chapter, I got really hooked in the story and I wanted to know what was going on. I wanted more explained to me and I was just yearning for this to be explored because I thought the setup was really interesting and every the little bits that were given to us in the first chapter. 
Then came my second uh, kind of gripe with this book in that all of a sudden after the first chapter, we fast forward 5,000 years and completely different story, completely different characters. And I was like, whoa, okay, well maybe we'll go back and forth. We'll just see what's going on here. And pretty immediately in the second chapter, I was super invested. I was like, wow, this is so interesting. The magic system, I'm learning more. The like character that we were focusing on was so, so, not unique, but I just wanted to learn more and I wanted to follow the story and I was turning the pages like nobody's business. And even towards the end of the second chapter, there was our first twist in the story that I was like, wow, you even just, you just already included a twist. That's great. And I was so hooked in this story. And then we have another time jump and completely different characters, not focused on this second story at all. And so I was kind of upset by that. And I was like, what are we doing here? I really wanted to read both of these stories. And now all of a sudden we're in a new place. And the next chapter didn't hook me too, too much or the next kind of part, I guess. I don't think they're, those were actually chapter one and two. I think they are like book one, you know, a storyline, part one, a storyline, then chapter one. So it's very divided up, which makes sense. It's a giant book. But I, now I'm at this point in the book where I'm not super interested in the storyline. It's not gripping me as much as the, sec the second kind of part was, but you know, I'm still invested and I still want to read it. So we're going to keep giving it a go. But those are just some of my first impressions of the book so far. And I will check in maybe when I've read, you know, 100 to 200 pages because this is a long, long book. See you then. So this book, I am about 252 pages into The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. And it feels like I have made no progress at all because this book is so huge. But essentially how I'm feeling about it so far is that there are a couple pieces that I really like. One being that all of the women in society in these societies are treated as the people who are kind of like the scholars and the scientists and the artists and all of these kinds of disciplines are seen as womanly traits and are seen as feminine and so all the women are essentially the people doing all of that while the men are I don't know I guess fighting wars um, and that's pretty much all they're doing but so I, I think it's really cool that uh, the women are kind of the like smart artistic people in this society and that's like kind of what is expected of women um, in terms of how the actual book has been going, um, besides that, there have been a lot of moments where I've gone up and down with this book because I do actually enjoy some of the stories that Brandon Sanderson is telling, and I really kind of get hooked in each one, but it keeps me reading, and maybe this is his intent, because it constantly switches to new stories which also does get a little exhausting considering how long this book is because I feel like as soon as I learn about this character and I get invested in the story, we're switching to a new story and then I'm learning new things. And there's just, because this is the first book, there's so much information and so many kind of world building things and so many things that are just fantastical because it's like a high fantasy novel. At least I think it's categorized as a high fantasy. But it's, it's really hard to keep up, especially because Brandon Sanderson kind of just introduces these things and all the characters just know like what they are. Like, I think, um, what was the one thing called? Like a chasm fiend and it's this like creature. And so Brandon Sanderson will just introduce those and then all the characters know what it is. So there's no like explanation and we just have to kind of go along for the ride and make our own assumptions or guesses and very slowly learn about these things. So that's been a little difficult because I think while that is effective and kind of fun, I also get really exhausted considering it's done over and over and there's so much new information. And I would just like a little bit more of just some explanations mixed throughout. But I keep 
holding on because it is my partner's favorite book. And I'm definitely not at a place where I feel like I would DNF it. Um, I'm not necessarily excited to pick it up, but I'm also not necessarily sad when I decide to pick it up. And when I do pick it up and get into it, I can read like a hundred pages or something at a time. But essentially I am sticking it out and holding out hope because my partner has talked about that there's a lot of payoffs throughout the book. And even in later books, you remember things and things are revisited from the first book and they're explained or there's payoff. And so I'm hoping that that does it. And the farther I go on, it doesn't feel as taxing to be in this world and learning all these new things. And there are a lot of different stories that I'm invested in and interested in and want to see where they go. So that's where I'm at. I'll come back um, when I have some interesting updates or feelings about different parts of the book, if there's any rants that come up. Um, but right now, I'm going to sit down on the couch, try to knock out a good portion of this book, and see how far we get. on a minute. Okay, spoiler territory, um, and I'll put the border around for spoilers, but this just, this chapter, you know, we're just hanging out, talking about Dalinar, and all of a sudden it says that he can't remember anything about the mother of his children. And he can't even remember what she looks like. And he can't remember her name. And when people talk about her or say her name, it immediately leaves his mind. And we're just gonna, you know, drop that in there and then move on. No more talk of it. Brando, why are you doing this? Oh my God. Now I'm gonna have to keep reading to find out like what, what? What is going on here? I have many predictions that I've been plaguing my partner with um, from, from Dalinar being one of the OG um, people that we met in like the first chapter, the really ancient people. Um, I don't know if they're called the Radiant Knights or whatever, to all, you know, some kind of strange, um, it very much gives me the vibes that maybe this is going to be similar to um, Westworld, if you've ever seen that show. It's like kind of just vibing whatever, and then all of a sudden you start peeling behind the curtains and seeing behind the scenes, and you're like, oh, hold on. I did not think this was going on. Um, so that's how I'm feeling. And... I'm nervous because what if Cody was right that this is one of the like best book series ever? Then I'm gonna have to keep reading these thick, thick books. Oh, okay, back to reading. Okay, so now apparently there's an ancient text in this world called The Way of Kings, which is the name of this book. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I have finally done it. It has been a Herculean feat.
Mm -hmm. But I finished Brando Sando. How long did it take you? Um, well, I've been done with it for like a month now. We just haven't gotten around to record this wrap up clip. Um, but I think it probably took me two and a half, three months maybe to read this book. Yeah. And there, and I wasn't, I was trying, I was trying hard. This book took me so long. So final thoughts. So I think I'm going to end up, I think I ended up rating it a four and a half stars out of five because I did really like it. I did really like the twists and turns. I liked how he built the story and the world and I am intrigued and want to know more. Yeah. However, it was so long. It was so long. And I just couldn't, I, I don't know if I could do another book this length. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, obviously it's a great book. It's an amazing book. I can understand that like, yeah, it's just too long, you know? Uh, it is, uh, it's a, a, like what would you say, like, Oh, just like an effort like like it just takes up so much of your time and especially if you're like reading through the whole series like that's like months that's months of of your time just devoted to these books um i think it's worth it but i could totally understand if someone thinks that that's like too much yeah i just like i think it's great i think he just takes too long like he has too much to say and I think like he does great like the length does allow the characters to be really built up and you get to really understand them and th see like every nook and cranny of the ways that they think about the world and their motivations but I think you don't need it I don't think you need I don't think this book has to, I think it has to be long but I don't think it has to be this long. I think he could have cut it down a little and it still would have had the same impact. I think, I disagree. I think that like, um, this is just the, it, it's like a type of book. You know, these like, the epic fantasy, they're usually this big because it is like, lots of world building, that's a huge focus of it, is lots of world building, really spending time with the characters. Cause that's like, and especially like in later books like it's it's just a theme of where you spend so much time with these characters and they're getting like broken down to like to the point where you're wondering how are they even still alive so then when you get to that very end where like crazy things are happening or the characters um overcome some sort of like obstacle it's really like at least for me, very like emotional. It feels like all the build up was like worth it because it made the payoff feel so much more like intense. Um, but that's where I, that's where it's like, yeah, if, if you're not really like wanting or wanting to get into a 1300 page book, then it's probably just not the kind of book for you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I definitely am intrigued and want to know what else happens. I just don't know if I can like set aside so much time to read one book or like, you know, to read books that are this long, but maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Do you think it's worth it? Do you think I should read the second book? Uh, the, the, Does the it second, get better? Does it get more bearable? The second book is my least favorite. Okay, um, cool. But it's, I mean, it's still like an, an incredible book. Like, like I'm saying like comparative compared to like the other books in the series it's my least favorite but like comparing it to other books i've read it's still like honestly like easy top 10 maybe even i wouldn't say top five but like top, definitely top 10 like sure. really good and then i think the third book is my favorite that that's honestly one of my favorite books i've ever read okay and didn't you say something like each book kind of focuses, I mean, it has a lot of time, so it focuses on lots of different <clears throat> characters, but doesn't yeah. it focus on, like, s certain characters? So who's book two about? Book two, uh, so so book one is about Kaladin. It's mostly Kaladin's book. Yeah, that feels, 
and honestly, kind I feel of, like Dalinar was also really focused on. So book three is focused on Dalinar because, oh. like, each book delves into like the history or background of a certain character. So yeah, this one you learn about like Paladin's Paladin, background, ba sure. b background growing up. Yeah. Then book two is Shallan. Oh yeah, uh, and that's why I didn't really like book two is because she's my least favorite character. Yeah, um, she's uh, to me she's very frustrating to read. Yeah, um, just kind of how her character is and then yeah book three is Dalinar and Dalinar is my favorite character so that's why I loved loved book three and it has just incredible story great ending yeah and book four is okay I honestly don't know who book four is like the main character of I think they don't really like do that really mm -hmm. so okay um well I wish book two would focus on who's Shallan's like mentor lady um what's her name oh god it's been it's been now like long enough where i'm starting to forget people's names um but yeah i know who you're talking about i wish it would have focused on her she's more interesting than shallan she she is definitely she's the one i want to hear from in the shallan storyline yeah no she's she's a really good character it always kind of like um, sucks that she's never like a sole focused character. Yeah, it's always like we learn about her through Shallan or Dalinar. Yeah, and I will say that like book two, she is not in it a lot. Really? Yeah. Even though it focuses on Shallan? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's so strange. Yeah. Is it spoilers why it doesn't focus on her? Yes. Okay, well. I mean, I definitely don't. If you ever even have, like, an interest in reading, like, further into the series, like, I definitely don't want to spoil anything. Because that's, like, I don't know, just, like, the build-up and, like, the, the surprises that happen and the revelations and stuff. Like, those are always so good. Yeah. Maybe I'll wait till I'm not in grad school and then maybe I'll give the second book a shot. I am very tempted to go watch... A YouTube video like explaining the whole series though so I don't have to sit through the books but we'll see. it's just yeah it's just like not the same I know like because if I told you like about Dalinar in like book three you would like you would get different things from it than actually just like reading it okay I think okay that's it's, like so in a condensed form mysterious. yeah yeah um okay well at least I'm done with it. That's all that matters. So that's going to wrap up this series, or this book. And maybe if you want me to read the second book, go ahead and leave a comment um, letting me know and pleading your case for why I should read the second book. Um, and we'll see if it happens. Yeah. Thanks for being in the video with me. Yeah, of course. Okay. I'm glad that you actually uh, read at least the first book of my favorite series. So Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for staying to the end of the video, and until next time, stay grounded. I feel like I should have something. Here you go. You gotta say it, and then do it. Uh, what was it? Stay grounded. Stay grounded. <laughs> oh, it's cold. <laughs>